offering of you to put in some fear in you this morning. Uh, it is not meant to be like that. Uh, I must say, this is a, a normal routine that we do, a simulation exercise, to test our readiness, both of us, you and then ourselves. Our response time, and then when the incident happened, what we are supposed to do at the right time to save lives and properties. That is what we just witnessed. And then to also see if it does happen here, how are you going to react? What can you also do in your own small ways so that we save life? And uh, today, I must say it went well, even though many of you are not aware. Uh, we've given a letter to that effect, which I think uh, uh, discussions have been made long ago. It's supposed to be last week, Tuesday, when we're having our International Firefighters Day. <laughs> But we realized the school was not in session. And then the administration too was kind of a skeleton one. So we wanted everybody to be around where we can have it so that everybody will have a feel. So I must say we are sorry for raising your PPs and whatever. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a normal routine and I believe it's a good exercise. And we have all seen our shortfalls and the, the things we are supposed to do when it does happen. And uh, I want to use this opportunity again to thank management for having us here. We have learned a lot. We have taken our lessons. And I believe you have also taken some of your uh, lessons. The scenario is just a simple one. Where we had a fire at the common room, at the top there. He was inside. And then he locked the door intentionally. So he knew we were there. But if it does happen, Nobody will know, he will not be the one locking the door, but anything else can happen. That is why we hesitated using the hooligan tool to try and break in to see who is there. If somebody is there and what at all is happening in there, that's why you saw us uh, going with some tools to go and break in. And then we pitch the ladder against the rail at the top so that we can quickly take the, the water to wherever the issue is happening. Then we had access through the staircase to go and rescue whoever is in there. And then after that, we, do, we did the CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation down there to bring him to uh, uh, stable. Then we now transport him to the hospital. It's supposed to be the ambulance service after we rescue, we hand over to ambulance, then ambulance will take him to the hospital. Or they can do their first aid treatment for him here when he is stable and there is a need for him to go to the hospital, then we'll go to the hospital. That is the brief demonstration we just did. And uh, uh, we cannot go without sharing some safety tips with us. Uh, when it happens, what do we do? Like it happened today. We saw the prayer warriors. We saw the ones who were seriously praying and then uh, casting the devil out of the school today. Prayer is good, but we also need to be uh, safety conscious. And then we need to know what to do at what time. So fire has occurred and there is an alarm for fire. What do you do? Please. Whatever you have doing, please get out of your office and come to a place of safety where we call the assembly point. But today we realized everybody was just standing anyhow, anyway. And then some of them were still in the offices, which is not good. Immediately you, you've heard an emergency alarm or a shout that there is fire. The first thing you should do is get out of the room because you never know what is happening. It can be the building collapsing. But what happens if you are still in there? Hmm? The fire didn't start from all the rooms. It was in one room. But it can quickly spread to other rooms. So the best thing for you to do is get out. If you have the fire service number, 
we try calling to see if we can come and rescue. Then before we come, there are some uh, basic or first aid firefighting gadgets that we have around that. That is the fire extinguishers. You have to be trained to know how to use them because uh, the fire as we have it are in classes. And so every class with a medium of extinction. So if you don't know, you will end up killing yourself or spreading fire the more. So that is why we need to be trained on how to use the extinguishers and then know the type of fire that you have at hand. Then you know the type of extinguisher to use for them. Then you try using the, the extinguisher at the incipient stage where the fire has started small, the small stage of fire. That is where you can use the extinguisher. When it is out of hand, there is nothing you can do. And so, when once you are out, you try calling. And then the next thing is that you try using the, the extinguisher to see if you can try to douse the fire before we come. Don't wait for the fire to get out of hand. Then you are now calling. Fire will not wait for you and I. When it starts now, within 30 minutes, this whole building can go down. And it spreads faster because there are lots of combustibles in the room there. So when it catch up with the ceiling, the curtains, you can imagine how it will spread. So sometimes, how fast are you to go out? Nowadays, we build and then because of security, we are using security doors or metal doors on our buildings both home, offices, and wherever we find ourselves. The burglar proofs that we fix. They are all hazards to us, but we need to use them because of criminals. You don't know who wants to budge into you when you are not around or even when you are around, they still want to come and rob you. So how do we do our burglar proofs? How do we, do we handle our uh, Chinese door or the metal doors? When there is fire, and then you happen not to know of it earlier, what happens is that when there is excessive heat to metals, they expand. And so once they expand, the spaces in between the frame and then the door itself become filled. So at the later time that you know there is fire, you wanted to go and open, the door will not open. We can hear many of these uh, dead in fire, somebody is dead in fire, got burnt in fire, a lot of them these days. It is because of some of these things. We have neglected safety and then we have taken security to be first and foremost. But these two things must go hand in hand. So our burglar proofs. We should have a place where we have key to the burglar proofs. Mm? There should be a specific place in the building where you have key to it. And that key should be hung somewhere for everybody who is in that house or that office to know. Now, in case of emergency, and there is no way for you to go out, go through this exit. It is known to in-house. All of you in-house, you know. So when it happens and you can't use the door, that is where you can use where the, you have the key to the burglar proof. We shouldn't do it in such a way that it is fixed and there is no way we can open any side of them. Another thing too is that we should get these uh, smoke detectors in our bedrooms, our offices, our walkways or corridors, and then hall. We should have the smoke detectors there so that in, in the event there is fire and the smoke is coming out, the sounders will sound very hard for you. Even if you are asleep, you will hear that something is happening. You don't wait when the fire is out of hand and the fire has got into your skin or the heat in the room is in such a way that you can now feel the heat that something is happening before you get out. Fire, when it is happening or it's burning, we have other chemicals that come out of fire, like carbon monoxide. When you breathe it in, it makes you drowsy. You sleep the more. Like some of the cough mixtures that we take, 
Why are they like that? When you take the cough mixture, you feel you want to sleep. You want to sleep because you have to sleep to rest so that the medicine will work on you. The smoke, is it making you rest? It will kill you. Before the fire will consume you, the smoke has already consumed you and you are dead. You, run, you, you, you lie unconscious. By the time you realize fire is there, maybe you are using the Chinese door or you are using the metal door as we say it or you have burglar proofs that are locked and the heat has made them to cause them to expand so where do you go out you can shout and shout and shout and shout and shout at the end of the day your your your, your shouting will just be going down 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 and then that ends it so please let us have these smoke detectors in our rooms in our homes so that in the event there is fire, we'll be able to know as early as possible. The earlier you detect fire, the better you get to solve the, the situation, rather than getting it out of hand before you try to call. And then our contact numbers or phone numbers. When I ask here, many of you don't have fire service number here. How many of you have it here? Can you give it to me? Uh -huh. You want to look? Uh -huh. 192. Any other? <laughs> so, so, in the event you have fire in your house, will you say you know it and you have forgotten? Do we see that? So, it is good. The, the 192 or 112, those are the short codes. That you can remember easily of her. Is that not it? But mind you, the 112192 is a national emergency number. And so when you call from Huawei here, it goes to Accra. It goes to Accra. Then it is a desk where we have fire service, we have police service, we have ambulance service, we have NADMO, we have the hospital on that same desk. So depending on your complaint, then they will hand over to either fire, ambulance, or whoever. And then now the person is going to ask you certain questions. At that time, you are in distress, right? Will you be able to answer all the questions rightly? Sometimes you may, you may even think they are asking you, excuse my language, foolish questions. I'm in distress, and you are asking me, where, where are you calling from? What is my phone number? And those questions are irrelevant to you at that, at that moment. But you need to answer them so that they can get the direction to wherever the incident is occurring. Now, you are mentioning, uh, let's say, Ahado. Maybe the person behind the desk doesn't even know Ahado or doesn't even know how to pronounce even Ahado. Yes. So he is now coming to ask you certain questions. Which region is that? Which district is that? Then they are now going to direct the call to Ho, which is our regional capital. Then the regional capital will look at where Ahado is. It means that they have to look for the district or the nearest fire station that can come and then solve the situation. By that time, fire will not wait for you and I. Do we get it? So wherever you find yourself, not only in St. Francis here, wherever you find yourself, your churches, your communities, make sure you have the contact numbers of the closest fire stations to you. So that in the event there is fire, you can call directly to that station and then they come and help you solve the situation. Our number in Huawei here, we'll give it out. Then you save it on your phones, write it on your walls, write it let let your children also know it let your children also know your number your personal numbers of head so that in the event of anything when you are not home they can quickly reach you and then you also call they also know the emergency number and then they also call so that we all have our role and then we play our roles well then we all have a safe community this is basically why we are here today and then with time we'll be seeing many of this i will come back here today you are busy 
So I'll come back here where we we'll have uh, fire safety training, uh, and then we we'll share some of the tips. Then we we'll try our hands on dousing fire in a small or a confined environment. What do we do? Then we we'll try to learn about it. So I would like to pause here. If you have questions, something you have seen before, something you've seen today, and something you've not understand and you want to understand, and then you ask your questions, then we we'll try to see how we'll answer those questions for you. Thank you very much.